Uh, my name is Ben. Uh, I'm a uh, so um, recently I got into like urban farming and uh, I'm interested in like things to do with uh, growing plants and um, and also part of that is composting because um, the food waste can be turned into uh, compost which is like natural fertilizer which you can use to create your own soil for growing your own food and plants. So it's like a circular loop, like closing the waste loop. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so uh, for those of, of you who are not familiar with what composting is, uh, I have on my screen uh, a picture. Can you all see my screen? Is, okay. Yeah, you, yeah. Can I, okay, good. So uh, this is what I call traditional composting. So <clears throat> traditional composting is very simple. You just alternate green layers and brown layers. So what are green and brown layers? So green layers are your food waste because it's normally green in color, you know, like vegetables or fruit tails, you know, they're very colorful and they're usually green, like <clears throat> green glass, grass clippings. And then browns, and they're usually wet. Okay, brown, browns are... Uh, uh, things that are actually brown in color and dry. So there are things like newspaper, uh, cardboard. Uh, it can be dried, dried leaves, brown color dried leaves. It can be cocoa peat. Cocoa peat is what we use for our machine. Cocoa peat is very good because it's uh, it's made from coconut husk. It's basically like the leftover shavings from coconut husk. And it's very good for, for putting in the compost bin because of the properties. Very fluffy. It absorbs a lot of moisture. And uh, it's very good for like uh, encouraging microbes. So traditional composting relies on microbes to break down the food waste. It takes, um, depending on how you do it, it can take anywhere from like uh, two to three weeks to like maybe two to three months, depending on how you do it. So the way we are doing it for <clears throat> our machine, because it's, it's not like a big machine, it's quite small, you know, like a vending machine size. So we decided to use a normal uh, trash bin, like a rubbish bin. Uh, so it's, it's not very big so we cannot reach the, the high temperatures that we want for for, for, uh, for very fast composting so for uh, so we are normally we're doing it for like two, over two or three months so the idea is that once the bin fills up uh, <coughs> the gardener or the maintainer of the machine needs to take out the bin and then uh, empty out the contents or replace with the empty bin okay so we are using the traditional traditional bin composting method so imagine this is a compost bin Okay, so uh, next I'm going to show you, uh, like before the project started, <clears throat> we, we had like, uh, like ideas of what, how it's going to look like and uh, how it's going to work. So we asked like, uh, this is a volunteer project, by the way. so I'm also like a volunteer. So uh, we asked somebody like a student to create a short video of what the, the, the vending machine would look like operate. Okay, so this is at uh, Amokyo Community Garden, that's Community Garden. Okay, so... Um, the compost bin is uh, over here, somewhere here. So there's a keypad over here for the user to unlock this door. There's a door over here, access door. So there's also an RFID card reader or keypad. So you can enter a very short password to unlock this door. Okay. So when you unlock this door, <clears throat> inside, uh, this is the top view uh, from looking out from the top view. The brown containers is the one that contains the cocoa peat, the cocoa peat, right? And then there's a grinder. This is the top view again. Okay, then there's a weighing, weighing scale over here. Yeah, and then there's a screen. Okay, continue the video. So you need to uh, put your food waste into the grinder. There's a funnel for you to uh, put the food waste into the funnel. And then there's a grinder. So you turn on the grinder by pressing the start button. And then after you're done finishing, uh, you have to press the stop button to stop the grinder. And then you have to turn this knob on the browns container to add a layer of browns onto the compost bin. Okay, yeah. So in composting, uh, we cannot we try to avoid uh, meat waste, dairy products, grease and oil because these will attract <coughs> uh, pests like like rats and cockroaches and all that, and we don't want that. And it will start <coughs> you stink up the, the bin as well. So we can only collect um, <coughs> certain types. The best will be vegetables and fruit, basically uh, non-processed food, non-processed food, natural food. Yeah. Then um, <coughs> one of the outputs that we need to weigh. To, to find out how much uh, food waste is collected. Yeah, this is the funnel for the 
putting the foot squares. Yep, so that's the video. And then we uh, came up with a, uh, a block diagram of, no, okay, first of all, it's the flow chart. So based on our discussions, we came up with a, with a flow chart. Uh, this, uh, this, this might not be a very proper one, but it's a very uh, quick one. Okay, so the video loops in the idle mode. <clears throat> and then you can open the door either by using RFID or a, or a, a code on the keypad. Okay, and then once it verifies that the person has entered the right password or the RFID card, then you unlock the door with a message, a welcome message. And then you ask the person to start uh, adding the food scraps into the grinder. So you press the green button to start the grinder. Then you add your food scraps into the funnel. Maybe ground, grounded, you'll be grinded. And then uh, you, you will be deposited in the compost bin below. And then after that, you stop. Then you, you uh, because the grinder is not attached to the microcontroller, we need to actually tell the user to uh, tell the microcontroller that it's done by pressing the keypad. So I asked the user to press the Xerix button, or no, sorry, the hash, hash, uh, hashtag button, hash button, yeah, to tell the, the program that they have finished uh, the grinding. Then after that, the program will, will tell the user how much uh, food waste was contributed. And then you ask the, the user to turn the knob to add the, the layer of rounds. And then again, because the, the knob is not automated, it's not connected to the microcontroller, so you need to tell the microcontroller that you're done. So you press the keypad to tell the program that you're done <coughs> adding the rounds. And then the program will thank the user. Yeah. Okay, then uh, we came up with a block diagram. So uh, <coughs> this is the, uh, the components that we use. There's a keypad here, the RFID reader, um, the 50 kg load cell, which is uh, this HX711 is a amplifier that will amplify the, the signal so that uh, the Arduino is able to pick up the, the signal yeah, from the, the, the load cell. Okay, and then uh, we're using <coughs> two ultrasonic sensors to, one is for the browns to find out how full the browns is to track like um, whether it needs to be topped up. If it's empty, right, then we need to tell the, um, the, the maintainer of the machine to top up the browns. And this one's for the compost bin. So once the compost bin is full, we need to tell the gardener to replace the compost bin. And then this is the solar lock for the door. And then uh, we need ventilation for uh, the electronics and also the compost bin because uh, compost needs oxygen to, for, it's an aerobic process which needs oxygen. So um, it's good to have ventilation in the, in the machine so that the, you help the compost as well to break down. Okay. So um, this is a demo of uh, <coughs> Okay, so I'll show you a demo on my G drive here. Okay, so this was like, um, before we installed it on the machine, this was like the breadboard stage. So I used uh, the Raspberry Pi for the, I used Python on the Raspberry Pi to create a very simple program. So, um, so the Arduino is talking to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi runs uh, the Python program with the, the simple user interface. So, <clears throat> So, oh, sorry, I think it went a bit too fast. Let me start again. Um, okay, so it starts on uh, the, the idle mode, which is the, the video loops on the idle mode. And then um, I use the RFID tag to unlock the door. And then um, the program will, tell, will welcome the resident and then tell the resident to start uh, processing the food waste. And then, oh, okay, so I put the RFID tag there to simulate um, the food waste. Yeah, so pretend that it, that it became heavier. It became heavier with, with that tag. And the tag weighs four grams, all right. So the load cell is able to detect a resolution of four grams. Then I'll tell the user to uh, turn the knob and then press the hex button when, when they're done. Okay, so press the hex button. 
So the user is finished. So um, tell the user to close the door and goodbye. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so, um, oh, one interesting thing is that we had to last minute, we found that the ultrasonic sensors didn't work because the, the cocoa peat is very soft and fluffy. It actually absorbs sound. So we found that the, it, it couldn't detect the, the cocoa peat. Like you get reading like minus one. So we had to change to a infrared uh, sensor at the last minute. Okay, so uh, yeah, we are using infrared. Infrared works with uh, black, soft fluffy materials. Okay, so next thing I'll show you is... Okay, yeah, this is what the machine looks like. Okay, so like this is the ground container, this is the screen, this is the, uh, the door, and this is the, the panel and the grinder. So, um, yeah, we use a container. Yeah. This is at Amo in Amokyo, um, near the community garden. This is a, this is what you call, it's not a final product. This is what you call the MVP, the minimum viable product. Still not working very well. Oh yeah, this is the infrared uh, sensor, which we put, uh, you can see like this points downwards towards compost bin. So this will detect how cool the compost bin is. <clears throat> this is for the browns container, the, the IR sensor for the browns container. Uh, okay, so like this is the, this, this white box is the Arduino Mega, we use Arduino Mega, and this is the Raspberry Pi 4 in the black box. And we use a Wi-Fi uh, dongle over here. The, the ventilation fan is behind. This is the, at the back of the, the RFID card reader. The RFID right, card reader is somewhere behind here. The lock is here. Uh, this is the back. Yeah. Uh, this is the testing with the cocoa peat and the infrared sensor. Uh, okay, I think the rest are not very interesting. So just like, uh, um, yeah, okay. Then the next thing I'll show you is uh, ThinkSpeak. So I'm using the free version of ThinkSpeak, which allows you for up to four channels. So I, use, I maxed out the four channels. And um, actually today was like the first day that we started collecting data. So the first data that we need to track is the RFID tags. We, we given out like, uh, we've just prepared like maybe about 20 tags. Then we name them from uh, one to 20. So this RFID tag nine, eight and one and so on. You see, it's still not working very well. Like I think it's my program is still a little bit buggy. Like uh, sometimes, okay, like this is a food waste uh, contributed. Okay. this. This sounds legit, like 178 grams is legit. Uh, 421 grams is legit, but occasionally you get like a negative, like 400, I'm not sure why. I think my program's uh, still a little bit buggy. Uh, and then the, this the IR sensor, the bin is for the compost bin. So over time, this will fill up. So the bin fullness will go up slowly, right? This should slowly go up, but the IR sensor is not working very well. So it's like 50% most of the time, but Sometimes you get like a 40, yeah, 1%. Yeah, yeah that's not working very reliably. Uh, and this is the browns container. So the browns should uh, go down over time as you use up. So this should start from like a high number and it goes to zero slowly, but uh, it's not working very well. I need to debug it. Um, yeah, so it's, it hovers around 60%. Yeah. Mm, yeah, okay, that's it. So, um, I'm actually <clears throat> was wondering if like uh, anyone would be interested to uh, help, help out with this project. Um, we're trying to get some funding for the next iteration, but this is a non-commercial project, it's a community project. So if you want to learn to find out like, I, I also want to learn. So uh, I'm not a professional engineer. So um, I, I would need like, I'll probably be asking people that know more things than me about how to like uh, mass, mass produce this um, like lower the cost and then how do you go to mass production like like maybe we start in by the third or fourth iteration you want to increase the number of machines and do like I don't know a few hundred I, I don't know like so uh, like some ideas I have now so of course we need to come up with some sort of PCB um, for the, the circuit and then um, you can mess the, the software is not issue right the software is quite easily uh, 
um, scalable. Um, the hardware will be issue like the frame and all that, but I'm not taking care of that. So that one, I'll, I'll leave it to the experts. Uh, other people, other people do it. But the software we uh, we might want to use like like some sort of cloud service for collecting data from many machines at the same time instead of using a free version of ThinkSpeak, for example. And of course, the user interface has been improved. Like now, it's just a bare minimal. Uh, so we get designers to come in to make a very nice user interface. And also, of course, the sensors need to be working reliably. So there's, there's still a lot of room for improvement. So uh, if anyone is interested in this project, uh, do let me know. And then I can add you into the GitHub page. And then uh, I can also invite you to come get meet up once in a while to, to like uh, think about like for the next situation, how to improve on it. So do let me know if you're interested in this project. Uh, this, this is a non-commercial project. So uh, I think there's no issues about, uh, I don't know, like proprietary stuff or stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm pretty much done with my presentation. So uh, open for questions. Yep. Uh, thank you, Ben. Yeah, anybody has uh, questions for Ben on his project? Oh, wait, uh, I just want to share something very interesting. So I found out there's this thing called VNC Connect, which is really cool. So what, what, what this thing is actually like a VNC Connect is like a software that allows you to um, look into your remote um, device. So I, I name it Raspberry Pi. I mean, it's a Namokyo. I'm at home now. So I'm actually able to uh, log in, like to see what's on the screen on my Raspberry Pi in real time. And then I can even like, um, I can even like, control the Raspberry Pi from here, like you, you, you type it or use the, the mouse and everything, it will, or you type commands into, yeah, you're using it like you're actually physically there. So uh, I think this is really cool. Like, okay, so now it's playing, the, the video is playing on idle mode. This is uh, what's happening on the machine now. So you can actually like uh, toggle. Uh, yeah, you can actually exit and then you can go to the desktop and all that. Yeah, uh, I'm using a Mac now, so I don't know how to quit this on my Windows. I can just quit this, but I haven't figured out how to put this on my Mac. I'm using a Mac now. So yeah, but you get the idea. You can control it like you're physically there. So it's just really cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, that's all. Yes. Yeah. I have a question here, uh, Ben. So I'm just curious, you know, what's the, the use case? The use case for, you know, uh, because I think you have in place, you know, somehow about authentication. Is, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is the purpose of that? Uh, we don't want people to like um because we want to train people, we want only like the residents of that block or to, or people who, who know what the machine is about. To, we want to restrict the number of people to use it for, for, for now. The idea is that uh, it's for the community garden. So actually we are only targeting like the, the local residents in the area. We don't expect people to travel like from somewhere else to just to use the machine. So it's like a thing of it, like a, a vending machine for those one or two blocks of at the most two or three blocks of that, that uh, surrounding the community garden. So we want to restrict the number of users. And then uh, we want to train, like just a quick, like to train the users on how to use the machine, what composting is about. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's more like, you know, you authenticate that the person has been trained and, you know, experienced yeah. user and local user. And as a resident also. So we, we know like this tech number, is like which unit number uh, is allocated to a tech number. We know who, who has uh, contributed. We want to keep track of like, who, like which unit. So let, let's say we have a hundred techs and then like there are a hundred units in the HTB block. So we know like which unit has like contributed how much food waste. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, anybody else has uh, any questions? You know, if not, nobody. I, 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 have, a, I, have, I have a question. question. Yes, yes. Uh, who is this? Uh, John. John. Yeah. Hi, okay, John. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so while composting, right, do you have to deal with uh, methane gas or anything like that? Uh, okay, no. So if you do it correctly, right, if you do it correctly, that means you are able to let it breathe. So we put, we, we drill, actually drill holes in the compost bin uh, so that the, the, the air can go through. So it's an aerobic process. So uh, uh, if you do it correctly, like there's, it's not supposed to have any kind of funny smell. If you do, there's a funny smell, that means is what you call anaerobic. Anaerobic means there's a lack of oxygen and you'll have this like ammonia smell and all that. So that's, that you're not doing correctly. So the correct way is to, to actually alternate the layers with greens and browns. Yeah, so if we do correctly, there shouldn't be any kind of weird smell coming. In fact, it should smell nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah. So if there's an off chance, right, of mm-hmm. methane gas or, or any combustible gas produced, no, 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 is no, there no, any no, danger no, no, no. in the cabinet? <laughs> No, 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 no way. That is not combustible. There's no way that okay. methane gas is produced. Yeah. No All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's just I mean, oxi- just carbon dioxide. Oh, it's like okay. it's like the microorganisms. They they need oxygen, and then they 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 respire. They give out carbon dioxide. Yeah, and yeah, there's a fan to to circulate the air. Then. Oh, yeah, not familiar with composting, so uh, I thought. Yeah. So I thought you can control. Gas can produce, yeah. Mm. Yeah. It, it, bad odors will happen if you put in things like milk dairy products or oily food or cooked food or processed food with a lot of chemicals, then, then the microbes are not able to break it down because it's, it's, it's chemical, you know, it's not, it's not like food for them. Whereas if you put like cardboard, newspaper, eggshell, uh, coffee, coffee grounds, tea leaves or uh, vegetable and fruit waste, these are things that in nature, the microbes are able to break down. So they'll be very happy, yeah. Yeah. That's why we have to train the people. That's why just that's why we want to restrict the people who use the machine. Because if they start adding honey things in there, then you'll cause problems. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh thank you very much, Ben, for sharing. Yeah, I think uh Ben, will you still be around? I think you'll be around after the uh the, the meetup, you know, to answer any to hang out and then you answer any questions you may have. And uh, I think uh for information, there's also, there's a lot of uh local co- community groups in Singapore that does uh, composting. You can Google search uh, Project Black Gold. That's another comp- uh, you know, yeah. composting project. And next up, we have...